To understand what Microsoft offers related to desktop virtualization, you first need to understand what they call RDS. Microsoft's Remote Desktop Services, or RDS, is actually a suite of different components that are part of the Windows Server 2008 operating system. Now some people might say that RDS is a replacement for Terminal Server, or Terminal Services if you're familiar with that. However, that's just one piece of RDS. You should also know that the different components, while contained within Windows Server 2008, may require separate client licenses once you start connecting end-user desktops or thin client devices to the server to provide remote desktops or desktop virtualization. So now let's talk about the different components that make up remote desktop services. The suite of components that make up Remote Desktop Services are listed here. They are RDSH, or Remote Desktop Session Host. This is actually the piece that replaced a terminal server, if you're familiar with that. It's the workhorse where remote desktop sessions are running. Then there's RSWA, or Remote Desktop Web Access. This is a web front end for the remote desktop services where end user client devices on your local network would connect to gain their remote desktop services. If your end user devices are external or out on the public internet, they would go through a remote desktop gateway or an RDG. Then you've got RDVH, that's a remote desktop virtualization host. This is actually a Hyper-V server where virtual machines are running that end users connect to. So this would be more of a traditional desktop virtualization solution here, the RDVH. And of course the RDVH for desktop virtualization needs a connection broker which is also part of a traditional desktop virtualization implementation and that's the RDCB or the Remote Desktop Connection Broker. Let's look at a picture where we can see how all these fit together. If we start from left to right here, on the left hand side you've got the remote desktop client. So that could be just like the laptop that I'm working on right now. That could be your home desktop computer or your work desktop computer. You've got a desktop client device. And then from that desktop client device, you need to connect to the remote desktop infrastructure. To do that, if you're out on the public internet, you would go through the RDG or the remote desktop gateway. If you're on the internal LAN, you would go through a RDWH, or Remote Desktop Web Access, a web portal, basically. From there, you're directed to the RDCB, that's the Remote Desktop Connection Broker. The connection broker is actually the go-between that really glues all these different solutions together. So from there, the client is directed to the Remote Desktop Session host if they need to run individual applications or if they need access to a full remote desktop. On the other hand, if they're configured to be provided their own virtual desktop, an entire virtual machine just for themselves, they would be directed to the RDVH, or the Remote Desktop Virtualization Host, where they get their own desktop. And then, of course, other important pieces of the Remote Desktop Services infrastructure are the Microsoft Windows Active Directory. The Active Directory is going to be used to authenticate these users, and it's also going to map them to remote desktop sessions or remote desktop uh, virtual machines over on the RDVH. And then you've got the licensing server, which is going to license these remote users and devices to access the different types of resources they'll be using in the remote desktop services infrastructure. Just a little bit ago, I talked about terminal server and terminal services. This has been renamed Remote Desktop Services, and this form of virtualization is actually session virtualization. Of course, this is done now with an RDSH, and this is the traditional terminal server model, if you're familiar with that. If not, I'll be demonstrating it here in just a second. Basically, with session virtualization, end users are accessing shared applications on a shared operating system. In other words, they're all accessing the same physical server. That physical server is running a single operating system. So they're all running on top of the same operating system. And then there's an installation of the different applications. Every user on that system is running the same installation of that application. So this has good and bad. Let's say you install Microsoft Office on an RDSH host. Uh, the end users access, let's say, Microsoft Word. They're all running the exact same Word.exe executable 
and then through uh, configurations you actually try to separate out uh, the registry settings it is fully supported it is very successful at many companies in fact I've used it myself uh, successfully in production for years but it also has uh, its good and, and bad side uh, again I'll be demonstrating this in just a second but for more information make sure you check out my other lesson in the series on desktop virtualization versus terminal server now let's compare session virtualization to desktop virtualization with remote desktop services desktop virtualization of course is done with an RDVH or the remote desktop virtualization host so this is actually a Hyper-V server and on that Hyper-V server there's multiple virtual machines every end user client device or let's say every end user uh, accesses their own personal virtual machine running on that Hyper-V host so every end user or every device however you want to map it has its own virtual machine that virtual machine has its own operating system and that operating system has its own applications installed so you can have different users all going to different virtual machines with different versions of the operating system let's say Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Server um, they're all running different operating systems uh, maybe even Linux and then they all have their own applications installed on those different virtual machines they could even be configured as administrator they could install applications they could make changes you don't have to worry about these users really affecting each other um, unless their individual virtual machine uses more resources um, than the other virtual machines on that host so Microsoft Remote Desktop Services is going to offer you either one of these solutions session virtualization or desktop virtualization and it's the RDCV or the Remote Desktop Connection Broker that's going to make the determination uh, based on your configuration where the end user will be directed to will they be directed to a session on an RDSH and only given let's say an individual Microsoft Word application and that's all they can use perhaps they could get a full desktop through the RDSH but it would be running on a shared operating system with shared applications on the other hand you could configure them to get their own individual virtual machine running on a Hyper-V server with their own operating system and their own applications all right, so that's the difference between session virtualization and desktop virtualization. And again, Microsoft's RDS offers both. Now, before I move into my RDS demo, I want to first talk about AppV. You may have heard of AppV, and you might be wondering at this point, what is AppV and how does it relate to RDS? Well, AppV is Microsoft's application virtualization. And what it does is it packages applications so that they can be run without installations. In other words, you could package, let's say, Microsoft Office or uh, Microsoft Word just by itself, and then that Microsoft Word executable could be run uh, just by itself without you having to install Word, without you having to affect the registry, and you could even run multiple versions of Word all at the same time on the same computer because you've now virtualized these applications with AppV. So it provides you a lot of benefits related to um, easier application deployments, easier application upgrades, portability of applications, and so on. And this is all very similar in concept to VMware's thin app. So at this point, let's jump into the demo of Microsoft's remote desktop services. And now I'd like to demonstrate Microsoft's remote desktop services. For any of you out there who have used the Windows application Remote Desktop Connection to connect to a Windows server like an Exchange server or an Active Directory controller or even to an end user desktop uh, to support them uh, or perform administrative tasks, uh, you know what I'm talking about. This is the Remote Desktop Connection client. This is the same client I'm going to use to administer my Remote Desktop Services Windows server. So here I'm going to click Connect and log in as administrator and then I get the desktop on the Windows server where I've configured remote desktop services if we go down here to start right click on computer and go into properties you can configure remote desktop on any Windows server but it's disabled by default so I usually go in here and I allow the remote desktop connections and then by default it's just the administrator account they can uh, perform that remote desktop or remote console control. 
Something else I can do here to demonstrate that this is a remote desktop connection is I can restore down this window and then you can see I've got this server's desktop in a window running on my local computer. I can maximize that window and there I am back again a full screen on the server console. Now let's open up the remote desktop session host configuration. As you can see here by default I've got one connection and that connection has its own settings such as restricting each end user to a single session. And then for licensing mode I've got remote desktop for administration meaning this is just for administration of this server. This isn't for end users to connect and run applications. I've also got the remote desktop services manager. This is another application here that shows me what users have connected to this server uh, via the remote desktop connection client. So I've just got one user, the administrator user, that's actually me, and then I've got options for that connection on the right hand side. I can disconnect the user, I can send them a message, there we go, I just sent a message to myself that said hi there. I can do other things, I can check the status of the connection. Um, I can also uh, reset or log off the user. And then we can go into the sessions tab and you can see I've got one session that's actually me. Uh, from here I can also disconnect, send message, reset or check status. So the sessions tab shows us every user connected to this server uh, remotely. Now if I go into the processes tab I see all the processes running on this server. Of course I could even view multiple servers from this MMC. Uh, but this also includes processes running by users uh, connected for uh, remote desktop purposes. So I can sort these by the session name, the username, and so forth. I'm actually logged in as administrator, so I'm one of those users. If I go and I start up a command prompt uh, to simulate an end user running a program here, and I can go in, I can find that command prompt. Actually, there's the executable there under the image uh, column. So you see cmd.exe. Let's say I had 10 users logged in running Microsoft Word. I would have 10 uh, Word executables running here in this process list. So that way I can manage uh, the processes uh, running by those users. I can see who's doing what. I could kill malicious processes just like I killed that cmd.exe executable. Now that we looked at session virtualization, let me show you how Microsoft's desktop virtualization works by going over to the same Windows Server 2008 system where we'll enable remote desktop services, install the connection broker, and give it a try. Here on this Windows Server, to enable remote desktop services, I'm just going to go into the Server Manager here and click Add Roles. I'll say next and then go down here to remote desktop services. We'll check the check mark there. I'll click next, next, and then here's where we get to select the different pieces of remote desktop services that we want to install. Here's all the different components that I showed you earlier that were on that graphic from Microsoft. You've got the session host, the virtualization host, licensing, the connection broker, the gateway, and web access. In my case, I've already got a remote desktop virtualization host, so what I'm going to do is simply install a connection broker here. Click Next. We'll go through the install, and then once the install is complete, I'd like to give you a demonstration of remote desktop services virtualization host so you can see how Microsoft's desktop virtualization works. With the Remote Desktop Connection Broker, also called the Remote Desktop Connection Manager, as well as the Remote App Manager successfully installed on this host, I can now demonstrate for you how you would administer Microsoft's desktop virtualization solution, as well as how an end user would connect to their personal virtual desktop. As you can see, we've successfully installed a number of Remote Desktop Services roles here. We've installed the Remote App Manager, the Remote Desktop Connection Manager, the Remote Desktop Session Host Configuration, and the Remote Desktop Services Manager. Now for this demonstration of Microsoft's desktop virtualization, we're specifically interested in the Remote Desktop Connection Broker, as well as the Remote App Manager. Now to start the MMCs that actually administer Microsoft's Remote Desktop Services, just go to Start, Administrative Tools, and then Remote Desktop Services. Here you can see the different MMCs 
related to remote desktop services. For example, I've already got the remote desktop services manager up and running. This is how you would administer the traditional terminal services host. And then we have remote desktop session host. This is the, the actual host configuration for the traditional terminal services server. From here, you can see we've got now the new remote app manager. Remote App Manager is used to configure remote desktop web applications. These are the applications that appear as if they're running on the end user's computer. It's here that you bring everything together that makes those applications work. Moving on, here's the Remote Desktop Connection Manager. This Connection Manager is really the configuration application for the Remote Desktop Connection Broker or for the Desktop Virtualization Connection Broker. So here you can see that the RD Connection Broker is configured for personal virtual desktops, for virtual desktop pools, and for remote application programs. You can see here that I've got one remote desktop web access server configured. I've got a virtualization host server, a session host server for the traditional terminal services clients. I've got a RD gateway server, and then I've enabled a remote app and desktop connections to be shown to my virtual desktop uh, devices out there. So far I haven't assigned a personal virtual desktop, but that's something I'm about to do. As you can see, a lot of configuration has been done to make this work. Um, and I can tell you from my experience in working with various desktop virtualization products, I don't feel that Microsoft's personal virtual desktop solution is very mature as compared to, let's say, Citrix Zen Desktop or VMware View. On the other hand, Microsoft's uh, session broker and session host, um, the traditional terminal services products are very mature and they're very enterprise grade. In fact, I use them myself. So now let me give you a demonstration of what this Microsoft desktop virtualization solution looks like by going over to my web browser where I can demonstrate uh, Microsoft's personal virtual desktops. All right, so here I am in my web browser. I went to the URL for the server slash rdweb. I logged in with my Active Directory username and password. And then here I get my remote app program. So I've got these different applications I can run uh, that are actually going to run on the remote desktop session host. And then underneath remote desktops here, I can connect to my remote desktop that I've named Windows 7 1. I'll click connect here. Type in my username and password, click OK. And here I am, I've been directed over to my personal virtual desktop that's actually running on a Hyper-V server. Let me show you what it looks like from the Hyper-V server perspective. Here's the Hyper-V manager, and this is actually the same personal virtual desktop that I connected to through the remote app web interface. By the way, you'll find over in your Windows Active Directory, if you go and edit the properties, of an Active Directory user, it's there that you can map that user to their own personal virtual desktop. Let me show you what it looks like. Here I am on my Active Directory domain controller, and as you can see, I brought up the properties for a user here named Bob. Notice the personal virtual desktop tab. This is where you would assign a personal virtual desktop to this end user. You would actually go in here and you would specify the computer that you want them to be able to connect to. There I just specified that computer. I say apply here or OK. And now that user has their own personal virtual desktop map. With a successful demonstration, now let's go back to our slides. Now that you've seen Microsoft's desktop virtualization solutions in action, let's move on to how you can try these out for yourself. You can evaluate Microsoft's desktop virtualization solutions for free simply by downloading Windows Server 2008 R2. As I said at the start of this lesson, all the different pieces that make up remote desktop services are contained within the Windows Server 2008 installation. So if you want to try out any of the components that make up remote desktop services, just head over to Microsoft.com and download that Windows Server eval.
here's what the web page looks like and in fact now you can even download a VHD or a virtual hard drive of the Windows Server 2008 operating system to bypass the installation and save you time on getting Windows Server up and running. Once you have Windows Server up and running you can simply go in and start enabling and configuring remote desktop services.